Hi everybody and welcome to the Rubbin is Racing Daily Fantasy NASCAR Show brought to you by FantasyDonks.com, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know to start playing Daily Fantasy Sports. I'm Sean Big Papa Williams. I'm Jamie the Lear Jet Lear. And as always, we'll be bringing you the breakdown of this week's NASCAR action. The Crown Royal presents the Jeff Kyle 400 at the Brickyard, Indianapolis Motor Speedway from Indianapolis, Indiana. Wow, and that's a mouthful. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. For sure. Uh, hopefully we won't uh, do that throughout the whole video here. Uh, we'll just <laughs> refer to it as the Brickyard. Yes. Uh, but uh, it's in uh, Speedway, Indiana. Um, the uh, uh, track is uh, 2.5 miles long. Uh, it's got nine degree turns uh, in the corners. Um, so with this uh, new aero package that uh, they're bringing with the spoilers, um, hopefully they'll be carrying a lot more speeds uh, into the corners. Yep. Um, but uh, as far as that goes, um, Kevin Harvick here has the uh, fastest track record at 188.889 miles an hour, similar to uh, the Pocono Speedway uh, that they race. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, it's a, uh, a huge track. So uh, definitely, <laughs> yeah, yes it is. definitely 160 uh, laps to uh, get this race done. Um, so, well, and like Lear alluded to, we have a new aerodynamics package this week. Uh, basically, they put these giant spoilers on the back of the cars to increase downforce, so the drivers don't have to let off the accelerator too much into the turns. Uh, there's a lot of mixed theories out there as to what this means. Some people are saying that it means the cars at the front of the pack are going to stay there completely. Um, NASCAR actually designed it so that the cars in the back of the pack can actually pass better and move through the field. Be more competitive. Um, it's yeah. just a question of whether or not this tweak works or not. Yeah. Um, I'm going with a little bit of a mixed approach to both theories, thinking that it'll help the cars in the back pass and keep some of the cars out front. We'll see that a little bit later with my selections. But before we get to this week's selections on the Brickyard, let's talk about last week's race and recap that action. And I'll start off by just saying I had a bad week. The killer bees last week in my lineup killed my lineup. Boyer and Bowman uh, combined for a total of negative 3.25 points. Oops. Uh, yeah, Alex Bowman, uh, car lit on fire, uh, and when that happened, basically, so did my money. Somebody key the uh, Britney Spears. Oops, I did it again. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I mean, you know, it happens, man. Uh, it's fantasy NASCAR. You know, this this kind of stuff happens. You're not gonna, you know, be competitive every single week. You're obviously gonna have some mm -hmm. guys that, uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, are just gonna, you know, finish horribly. But um, overall, last week, I think we had uh, some good some good picks as far as. That uh, started out with Matt Kenseth. He started eighth, finished sixth. He scored 45.25 points, only 13.3% owned. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle Busch, uh, Rowdy took it home last week again for the second week in a row. Uh, started fourth, finished first, scored 82.25 yeah. points. And we keep learning, don't mess with Rowdy. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah. That crispy edge will get you every time. <laughs> um, but uh, he was 34.34% or 34% owned. Uh, and led 95 laps last week. And that 34% so. owned is why I'm fading him again this week. It's yeah. not that I don't like him. It's just that ownership percentage is getting too ridiculous to separate yourself in a GPP, yeah. and I don't want to be a part of a group that's 34%. You know? Yeah, that's quite a bit. Um, and then uh, Brad Keselowski uh, started 10th, finished 2nd, uh, scored 107.50 points. Uh, so he obviously had the most points yeah. out of anybody in the race last <laughs> week. Um, but he was only 18 0.8% owned and led 101 laps last uh, last race there at mm -hmm. uh, Loudon, uh, the 5-Hour Energy 301. So, But, um, you know, your Carl Edwards pick uh, started first, finished seventh. So your one-to-one -one, uh, theory didn't quite come yeah, to fruition. Yeah, not, not quite, but he did put up enough points that he was still liable. 47.5. Uh, yeah, and the 47.5... If you would have just led a little bit more laps, like uh, been the fastest car out there, just a little bit more, would have been in that 65 plus range, and that's where you want to be. And um, you'll see a little bit later, I actually like him this week to better his performance from last week and, and possibly go one to one. You know, the masses were also with you last week, too, because he was 30% owned mm -hmm. uh, in, in the lug nut. So, but, um, and then we also, my guy that I thought was going to definitely uh, do perform well, uh, didn't, um, yeah. Denny Hamlin, uh, started fifth, finished 14th, so not horrible, um, but only scored 20.25 points, but he was 23% owned, um, and yeah. then obviously your Boyer play, but, yeah. um, you that know, means maybe the, best, you the best you can say is he didn't go negative. Uh, like, yeah, right? exactly, <laughs> um, but uh, maybe you should have stuck with uh, your Gordon play every single yeah, week. Yeah. Uh, started 23rd, finished 9th, uh, scored 53.25 points, and was only a low percentage owned at 12.3%. So, yep. but yeah. 
Well, with last week's recap out of the way, I, I you know, since I lit my money on fire, uh, like like Alec Bowman's car, I definitely I, still won money last week. Uh, <laughs> don't get me wrong, um, just uh, not for what I was hoping. Well, fair for. enough. I'm I'm looking to forget last week's race and move on to this week's action. I'm definitely ready to move on. And with that said, let's move to the Who's Burning Rubber segment. Burning Rubber, baby. <laughs> and my first pick for the Burning Rubber segment is Matt Kenseth this week. He carries with him an eleven thousand three hundred price tag. I want to be clear, I'm paying for consistency in a good car here. Kenseth is qualified 23rd, which means he's great for pass differential this week. Uh, his track history here and his current form say he's way underqualified at the 23rd position. That means a lot of points in pass differential. Uh, it, it, and at the 11.3 price tag, that's just sexy. I think in this price range, most people will be on Kyle uh, on Kyle Busch and Dale Earnhardt Jr. I think we've seen we've seen this over and over again. People just love Jr. in the sport, and they continue to buy him at at, at crazy rates. Yeah. Um. And Kyle's ownership percentage is just astronomical. And if if the play to Kenseth with his performance is what it should be, and what his track history says, top five should, last year. Right. He should outpoint actually Kyle and Jr. for the value. Yeah. And, which is why Definitely I'm going with Kenseth. for sure. And I've got a low ownership percentage like argument here yeah. where he'll be way under owned compared to those two. That's why I go with Kenseth. Who's no, your I, first pick? I, I definitely, uh, before I give you mine, I definitely agree with you there. Mm. Uh, I do like Matt Kenseth this week. I'll definitely be playing him in uh, some of my GPPs. So uh, definitely agree with you on all your points there uh, about Matt Kenseth. Sweet. So who's your first pick, Larry? Uh, my first pick uh, is Casey Kane. Mm. Number I five. Like I like it. Tell us uh, why. Reason why I like Casey Kane this week, um, he definitely has a good track history here. Um, last year he finished in the sixth spot, um, but uh, you know he qualified 27th today. So definitely one of those other guys too. Where and and before I get more into this, I definitely want to tell you that you know based on the track that we have here versus last week. Last week's theory is more of fastest laps and then also laps led. Where this week it's going to be a bigger track, less laps. So you're going to want to focus more on the pass differential, mm -hmm. place differential guys for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's mainly why uh, I like this guy, uh, Casey Kane, because he's starting in the 27th position. Plus 10100 man. You cannot yeah, beat that price point. At his price point, uh, it's just like, yes, please. Yeah. Essentially. I, I and love that every play. Every time. 20, qualifying 27th, like with the new packages, he should be able to move up. And like you said, with less laps on the track, that means less total points for laps led and for fastest laps. Yeah. It's just and he started last year in the top 10, but he did lead 70 laps here last yeah. year, which is quite a bit for 160. Um, and over the last three years, this guy has an average finish of seventh. So give me Casey Kane all day, every day mm -hmm. at the Brickyard this weekend. I'm going to be over him all over the place, no matter what contest it is. Yeah, and I think he's going to be one of those guys that has a lower ownership percentage. And I'll dive into that just a little bit later when we're talking about our going to the garage picks. But my second uh, who's uh, who's burning rubber this week pick is Carl Edwards at 10,300. Uh, he's in the Stanley Toyota. He has back to week, back to back weeks on the pole. Edwards was a bit of a disappointment last week, falling back to seventh. But His like, back end must be hurting quite a bit. <laughs> but like we said, he put up 47.5 points. I like him to at least put up those numbers. Like when we talk about floors in fantasy, I think that's what his floor was uh, last week. I think his ceiling is well above that. I mean, if we get a few more laps led, a few more fastest laps, or e either that or he finishes higher than seventh, you're talking about 60, 70, 80, 90, even 100 points with just a couple of minor tweaks. And at the $10,300 price tag, it's criminal. The only problem here I have with Edwards is that there might be a ton of people on him. But I'm guessing, and this is this, this is me inferring totally here, I've, the, the reason why, I'm, why I think his ownership percentage is going to be a little lower is because he did kind of burn people last week by yeah. not hitting the 50 uh, mark. Definitely. And uh, I, I think that several people like like to play that recency bias. Yep. They're like, I got burned by him last week, so I, I'm staying away. And I think the savvy player is going to be all over him this week. No, I uh, I definitely agree with you there. Um, I, I definitely will play some Carl Edwards this week in GPPs. Um, probably not as much 50-50s heads up. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, as far as uh, Edwards here, um, you know, he's at a great price point of 10 um, and starting at the pole. So... You know, I don't think he's going to win the race, 
um, you know, as far as that is concerned. Um, but, you know, he should finish uh, within the top 10, staying up front most of the day, uh, and should, you know, for sure produce you good positive points. Uh, and yeah. at that price point, you know, it's definitely a good guy to have on your, on your squad for sure. Right. If I can get, if I can get anything north of 50 at 10-3, I'm yeah. happy. Sure. So, Lear, who's your second pick to burn rubber this week? My second burning pick, uh, excuse me, second burning rubber pick this week <laughs> um, is Martin Truex Jr., what, what, what? Yeah. Truex Jr. Okay. Please I know a lot of you out why. there are probably scratching your head. But you got me scratching my I, head. I know. I know. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, at least it's bald, so you got to correct scratch. <laughs> hey, I shave. I still have <laughs> But uh, when, it, when it comes to Martin Truex this week, um, I, I definitely like this guy. Uh, definitely for GPPs because a lot of people are going to be off of him uh, based off of his history here with the last three weeks um, with these short tracks in the road race. Mm -hmm. Um but uh, the reason why I like him is because he uh, definitely finishing 13th uh, this week. Uh, I'm sorry, starting... Uh, qualified 13th. Yeah, qualified yeah. 13th. Talking way too fast We knew here. what you meant, dude. Um, but he qualified 13th this week, and I know he costs a lot of money. He's 12100 this week. So if you're going to be on him, obviously you're going to be a guy that you are buying all in on you're pushing mm -hmm. your chips and saying, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in on this guy, yeah. which I definitely will be in GPPs this week. Um, but, uh, you know, this track is very, very similar to Pocono and back in the early part of June, uh, Martin Truex took the uh, Pocono race down. Um, and he hasn't been performing very well lately and he does pretty well on these, uh, larger tracks. Uh, so, um, I think a lot of people are going to be off of him. So that's why I love, uh, Martin Truex Jr. This week in the 78 furniture row car. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he definitely, uh, will be a low percentage owned guy. Like I said, yeah. um, but let's, All right, let's well, get it done this week, Martin Truex Jr. I'm gonna get, I, I'm gonna agree with you in a little bit, but then then disagree with you. I I will guarantee you he's the least owned of the elite drivers whose price is north of 11k. Yeah, and if not? your goal here is to swerve from the field and contrarian. get a low owned guy on a contrarian play, yeah. that that's the play to do. But his 12,100 price tag with his history, I can't do it. I'm not that kind of player. I'm not going to guess. The Truex Jr. is going to pull out of this slump and all of a sudden, like, move up the pack from 13. Because essentially, when he qualifies 13, for him to pay off the 12 1 price tag, you are banking on Truex Jr. winning the race. Yeah. Which I don't have a problem doing if that's your GPP strategy, which I know it is. And that that's fine. I, I just. Just in the bricks. <laughs> I just. I cannot put that money in Truex Jr. at 12 1 when I can get, a, in my opinion, better drivers that have better track history here. Um, for a cheaper for a cheaper price which allows me to get a better driver in the four and five yeah. spot in my opinion and this is just me being a, a, just more riskier than than most mm -hmm. people yeah. and and that's really that's what's going to take down uh, one of these gpps uh yeah. is you have to be the guy that's willing to go out there uh lay your sack out there and, and play it so I am definitely going to be doing that this week with Martin Truex Jr. Uh, 50-50s, maybe a little bit here and there, uh, but I'm definitely not going to be playing him heads oh. up, and I won't be playing him. Uh, See, uh, I, you couldn't in, in you couldn't pay me to play him in a 50-50. I'll, yeah. I'll say that much. I like the GPP strategy, but as far as a 50-50 goes, like that is way way too much money. Yeah. And like I, I mean, the goal in 50-50 is to get the best safest lineup. Yes. And I just, no, definitely for sure. I don't think that's where you want to go. But I understand why you're doing it, and and it makes sense. I just I personally don't have the chomps right now to put that faith in Truex. So with that said, um, I think it's a good time to move to the going to the garage segment because yeah. that's basically what my arguments were for Truex there. Uh, my first going to the garage pick is going to be Kyle Larson. He qualified fifth, which screams to me that he's pulled another one of these overqualifications. We've seen it time in and time out. Larson likes to qualify up top and then just pull it out of the hat. Get passed. And he gets passed again. And he gets passed again. And it's just like, um, okay. Kyle Larson in the wall. Yes. And we've seen like last week he was negative four point or three point seven five. The week before that he was negative thirty plus. Uh, I just I don't like this history of overqualifying. And even if you want to throw that argument out, the real argument here for me is, is that it's $10,000 price tag. I'd rather spend up the hundred to get Casey Kane. Like you told us earlier was a great play. Yep. Or I'd rather spend down, save money, 
I can grab Ryan Newman, who's starting in the back of the pack. Get this, because they forgot to put the right side window in the car. <laughs> and then when they realized they forgot to put the window in the car, they didn't have enough time to get the window in the car before he was due out on the track. Oops. So, yeah, so he gets to start 43rd. I love that play at that value, and especially saving money over Larson. Uh, you can also even grab Tony Stewart here, who starts in the outside of the second row. Um, at a cheaper price than Larson. I I just think Larson's overqualified and overpriced. I'm going to completely disagree with you here. <laughs> um, you know, we've been off kind of the Kyle Larson train uh, lately. Hi, Kyle. Um, but... Um, Lear, is this just to get back with me for the Truex comments? No, no, no. Okay, no. okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, obviously Kyle Larson has been doing horribly uh, these, these last, you know, two, three... Uh, weeks and um, you know with him starting up front last year he had a, a top 10 finish he finished seventh here um, so he's got some good track history here at these uh, larger races especially here at Indy uh, at the Brickyard um, but uh, you know I definitely will be playing some Kyle Larson this week um, and I think because of that fact the way he has been trending uh, that a lot of people are not going to be on the Kyle Larson train Fair this enough. week and you know as karma goes eventually you will do well if you've been doing crappy. So it is time for Kyle Larson. Kyle, it's time for you to have a good finish. So let's get it done this week. All right, buddy? We know he's a big fan of the show. I know. Um, <laughs> all right, Lear. Who's your go to the garage pick? My going to the garage pick this week uh, is a number 22 Penske Joey Bag of Donuts Logano. Uh, Logano is starting this week in the second spot. Uh, his cost is eleven thousand one hundred dollars, so mm -hmm. kind of high up there. Um, uh, obviously, he's still a thousand dollars less than Martin Truex Jr. But uh, Joey Logano has been finishing well uh, these last couple weeks here. Um, but um, you know, his average finish here over the last three years is fifteenth, and with him qualifying second, um, I don't know. Maybe he gets up there and he, mm -hmm. he leads a couple. You know, gets in front of Carl Edwards and, and leads some laps. Um, but these Penske guys just do not historically perform very well here at the larger tracks, uh, especially here at Indy. Um, so I am completely, completely off uh, the Joey Logano train this week, and I think you should be too. I like that your arguments for why Logano is you're going to the garage pick are the exact same arguments I gave for you on Larson, but yet you differ. Because Logano has been doing well. Logano has been okay, trending okay. very, very I, I well saying, the I last three weeks yeah, where Larson has been doing very, very crappy and getting negative <laughs> points and not finishing races. So I just, I, like, I, I, I appreciate your cojones here. I just, I can't fortune guess that. And like, sure. I think that's what it is. My reason for, I, I agree with you on Logano is somebody I don't want to pick. But the reason I have. That's what my crystal ball tells me. <laughs> the reason I have is I can save $100 and buy Jeff Gordon who actually underqualified, who oh, destroys yeah. this track. Exactly. And it, I'm sorry, it just it doesn't make any sense to me to pay the extra hundred dollars and buy Logano. Yeah. But my for GPP, you know, I throw mean, a couple Loganos in there. You might, yeah. Why not? Why not? But uh, for majority, off that Logano track. <laughs> All right. Now that you know the drivers we like and don't like, it's time for you to see our lineups in the Lugnut 5K. This is a unique, uh, a unique experience. We are the only fantasy show out there that shows you an actual lineup that we've put together that we have money on. So you know that we not only just give you these plays, but we also believe in them as well. And we'll um, stand by them. Yep. And it lets you hold us accountable. Exactly. So my first pick on my lineup for the lug nut is Carl Edwards, as we said earlier. Uh, I don't think we need to rehash why. Yeah. He's 10,300. Love it. Started off there. I then added Matt Kenseth, uh, as we've talked about before. Love it. Uh, love what he does on this track at 11,300. So obviously you're riding the JGR yes. uh, Expressway this week. Yes. And then I swerve a little bit and go with Jeff Gordon at 11,000. Can't, can't um, go wrong there this week. He just destroys this track. You know, you all know I love Jeff Gordon. Yeah. Uh, and I'll agree with you this week. I'm not going to give you a hard time go. this week because it, <laughs> this week I definitely have a good feeling that it's going to come to fruition this week and Jeff Gordon is going to actually pay off and nice. at his price point. Nice. Well, and dude, let's be honest, except for a couple of pit crew errors, like including one lug nut not going on a tire and then adjusting the wedge when it didn't need to be adjusted. Yeah. He hasn't disappointed fantasy wise all season long. And he's been hovering in that 10 to 11 price range, and he's been putting up the right points. 
So I go back to him this week after straying from him last week. Hopefully he'll continue to pay off at that eleven price tag. That eleven thousand. I mean, come on, guys. Mm -hmm. This guy's got five wins here uh, at the Brickyard, and you know, um, with him uh, winning it last year, um, and, and this being his uh, his tour of farewell tour. Yeah, I mean. It's just one of those things where I think destiny is going to come into play. It would be appropriate to see him <laughs> kiss the bricks in his final. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, with his spot as well, where he qualified, mm -hmm. he definitely is going to be one of those guys that we talked about that has the best, one of the best opportunities I mean, to move up and get your yeah. place differential past differential. Walls middle of the pack, gets us the pass differential, and in the process might be one of the fastest cars on the track. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, what, you, that's what you dream of in fantasy NASCAR. My next play here is Ryan Newman at 9,300. Uh, 9, We've said it already. They forgot to put a window in, so now he's at the back of the pack. That's a great car, great driver, starting nowhere near where he should because of, oh, the, yeah. uh, because of recruiter error. And Finished here last year at 11. Yeah. And at $9,300, like, essentially, once I put him where he should be in the field, if he gets there, we're already up to the 45-point mark, like, yep. close to it. I, I think with that, with once he gets there, you're looking 45 to 75 points this week, and at a 9-3 price tag, that is just extremely sexy. I'm all over Newman this week. Definitely sexy, and I think the masses out there, too, will think it's sexy as well. Um, mm. So I do think that he'll probably, plus with his price point, 9300 bucks. I think he will be kind of a highly owned guy. Um, but that doesn't scare me off of uh, Ryan Newman this week. Yeah, it wouldn't scare me even if that's the case. I, I just think the value is too good there. But secondly, I think, once again, this is going to be an instance where we have uh, the casuals swerving from the strategy because yeah. of what happened with Boyer last week. Everybody was on Boyer because of the underqualification last yep. week. He then let everybody down. I think that, that that recency bias that people have may keep people off Newman doing the same thing, even though it was a window of all things. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. Um, then to round out my team, I have Casey Mears at 7,700. He qualified 16th, which is a nice position. Um, should be able to pass a couple cars. Should be right in the mix. Um, basically, with this pick at the value, I'm hoping for a top 15 finish for my points um, and a couple of pass differential points. If he can do that at 7,700 and get north of 40, that's all I need for this lineup. And that's I think what north of 40, for. you're doing a lot of wishful thinking on that oh, one. Fair enough. If I can get north of 20, I'm happy yeah. with it. Yeah, only positive. As long as it's positive points, <laughs> yeah. I'm hopefully not like a two-week ago, like uh, Austin Dillon with a .25. But or like Bowman's one point last <clears> week. <throat> yeah. So, but, um, you know, I, I'm not on the, the mirrors train this week. Uh, mm -hmm. if you like a guy at the same price point, um, as, uh, Casey Mears, I'm, uh, I definitely like Eric Amarola 7,700 as well, mm -hmm. qualified 22nd. So lower than Casey Mears. Um, and he's been mm -hmm. trending well, uh, a lot too this week. So, but, uh, not this week, but trending very well the last, you know, few weeks, few weeks uh, season, between yeah. 40, 50 points, uh, each time at the 7,700 price point. It's kind of surprising, which, uh, DraftKings hasn't, uh, upped his price point yet. Please don't do that DraftKings. <laughs> um, no, please but, do like, please. Uh, the reason I, I forgot to say this is a second ago. The reason why I'm on mirror here is, is the mirrors here is I, I'm viewing it as a swerve on the value play. And the reason why I say that is. Everybody and their brother is going to is going to be all over Amarola. And yeah, they've seen how he's been performing. Right. And not only that, but he's been on the winning lineups, what, yeah. the past three weeks? Probably. And with that said, I just his ownership percentage keeps creeping up and creeping up and creeping up every week. At his price tag, it could be at well north of 30, and I just don't want a piece of that. Yeah, I hear you. So... Anyways, with that said, that's good, my lineup. Good, good, good lineup, though. Well, thanks, dude. I, I, like I appreciate it. it. Yeah, it's well. I, I view it as a well-rounded lineup with a little bit of the guys up front, a little bit of guys in the middle, guys that can move from the back. You know. So we'll see. Lear, what's your lineup look like? My lineup this week uh, is going to be heavy, heavy, heavy in the Chevrolets. I know I've got the Ford Shelby T-shirt on today, um, but. Uh, I am so in other words, you're a walking contradiction. Yeah, yeah pretty much. That's, <laughs> that's pretty much. That was too easy, bro. Yeah, all uh, right. I just threw it up and <laughs> hit it out of the park. Damn. Uh, but uh, anyways, um, my first pick, uh, obviously, um, I had two burner rubber guys, uh, Casey Kane. Can't go wrong with this guy. Twenty seventh, mm -hmm. uh, ten thousand one hundred. Um, everybody out there should be all over Casey Kane this week. Mm -hmm. And if you're if you're not, then uh, you know. 
Better luck for me then. No, the only reason not to be on Casey Kane is if you're trying, if you find the two hundred dollars more, and you're going to Edwards and hoping that he leads, like goes one to one or one to five, yeah. like somewhere in there. But I mean, Casey Kane, like I said, mm-hmm. finished sixth here last year, driving a Hendrick car, um, nothing but opportunity. The only thing that's going to be able to knock him out is, uh, you know, unfortunately a wreck or, or something like that. But um, hopefully that's not the case. Uh, second guy, Martin Truex Jr. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of you out there are, you know, saying why the hell is he picking this guy? But um, like I said, I, the way that Martin Truex has been performing in 2015, uh, he won the Pocono race, which is very similar to Brickyard here at Indy. Um, and uh, you know, I, I just think it's time for Martin Truex to get back in the limelight and uh, time for him to, to get back up there in the top five. And, I, and uh, you know, I hope he does do so because he's starting in the 13th spot. And I, I, uh, I think he's just going to finish up there and have some good points for now, it. Just a quick explanation. The reason why Lear keeps saying that this is similar to Pocono is because of the amount of braking and uh, turning that you actually do. It's and not the degree like, of turning is right, flat. The, the style, of course, is completely different, but like it, it does have some similarities in that And the aspect. length of the, yeah, the, the, the track. That, I just want to clarify that for those of you that are like, wait, this is an oval and yeah. that's a triangle. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. No worries. All right, Larry, who's your next pick, bro? Uh, next pick, uh, a lot of people uh, out there in the fantasy NASCAR community probably going to be all over this guy. Um, but Austin Dillon, uh, 8,300, uh, excuse me, 8,400 price point uh, mm-hmm. this week. Uh, Austin Dillon finished ninth here uh, at the Brickyard last year. Um, you know, and with uh, with that, and he's starting in the 25th position. Um, like I said, I am all over the place differential, pass differential guys this week. Um, sprinkled in, you know, uh, hopefully um, somebody that's going to finish up there at the top of the race. Yeah. But mostly sticking with the guys, pass differential, place differential, and uh, with him starting in the 25th position and being at that 8,400 price point, uh, it's definitely a no brainer for me. Mm-hmm. And he's on a good, uh, uh, he finished uh, very well last week. So I think he had 58 points last week. So, um, but uh, definitely like Austin Dillon. Yeah, at that price point, you can't really go wrong. Yeah. Like, yeah. And All then right. the next guy that I got, I'm uh, not going to rehash it. Uh, we've already gone over it, but uh, Jeff Gordon, um, yeah. you know, definitely going to play the guy that uh, dominates here at his home track. And uh, let's get it done this week, Jeff Gordon. I love that we doubled up on that pick. When you've given me so much crap for taking Jeff Gordon all year, like that would not have been the pick I would have guessed we doubled up on this week. Yeah, <laughs> uh, last time we did was when I was uh, deployed for work, and that was back in early part of June. Yeah, yeah. so um, <laughs> but uh, and that was when you went solo. Uh, next uh, pick for me um, is going to be uh, my last and final driver, and this guy uh, is not a full time racer uh, here on the NASCAR Sprint Cup circuit, uh, but. He definitely has the equipment to uh, be up there, and he's also starting, uh, I believe, in the 28 spot somewhere in there. Um, but Chase Elliott, man, mm-hmm. um, 8,300 for this guy. Yeah. Last time that Chase uh, was in uh, a Sprint Cup race, he had like 40 some points and was also on the winning team in the lineup. And with where he is qualified at in the late 20s, mm-hmm. with the equipment that he has. I think he has a great opportunity to, uh, you know, get up there in the maybe top 10, uh, between 10 and 15, which from where he starts at, that I I definitely will take points from that guy all day long when uh, I don't have to dig deeper uh, down in the pool of guys uh, for the, you know, the Landon Castles, the Bowmans, and the D. Benedettos. Let's not forget, too, like, this is, NASCAR is a very popular sport. Um, a guy that doesn't run full time here is uh, like like Chase is going to be under owned. Yes, just because people don't recognize the name. Right, and um, that alone gives you a nice little in. Um, but the fact that he has a great car, great equipment, and not only that, but like as a part time driver, they pick and choose what tracks are best suited for yes. him. Yes, and they they said this is one of them, and they're rolling them out there. I love the play, love the value. I, I think you're going to get a lot a lot of movement out of it this out of this lineup. There, I will say this much: if he and Truex Jr. hit, you will be solely on an island. I'm pretty sure. I hope um, so by yourself, and that's a great posi- way to position yourself to win a GPP. It's just whether or not it pans out. But like, yeah, those two are going to have extremely low ownership percentages, in my opinion. And um, I really like that lineup. Thanks, man. Appreciate no, it. No worries. 
Um, remember, uh, now that you've seen uh, our lineups for this week's 5K, remember you can join that 5K by clicking on any of the DraftKings links on FantasyDonks.com. That helps support FantasyDonks.com, and it's through that support that we can bring you free shows like this and um, keep this content free, which is our goal. We want to have yeah. uh, more voices in the fantasy community uh, because, as we've said from the beginning, there's no experts. It's just different people coming to different art, uh, different reasons and different picks perspectives for, for sure. with different perspectives and different arguments and different logic. And uh, the best players choose choose out of all that logic and like out of all that thought process and select and take pieces here and there yeah put together lineups and uh, that's what we that's what we hope to be and that's what we are it's just uh we want to be a solid voice for you guys in the fantasy community and, and we lo we just love doing the show i, love, I just like, like doing have so it much fun week. and we'll be starting a football show here next oh, yeah. month uh look forward to that as we're both profitable football players we'll have our buddy uh chris murr joining us another profitable football player in daily fantasy and um, with that said, we'll wrap up this week's show. Remember, uh, we want to thank uh, we want to thank our guy on Twitter that submitted our question. What was his name again? Draft Drive. Draft, yes, at Draft, Draft Drive. Drive. At Draft Drive on Twitter, submitted a question last week about uh, whether or not he should take Larson, and we told or him, Newman or Newman. We he said, I, "Should I do Ryan Newman or Kyle Larson?" And we both told him uh, within within uh, ten minutes yeah, on Twitter. Uh, him yeah. asking. Um, you know, told him go Newman, uh, which I hope he did. I hope he did draft drive um, because obviously Ryan Newman had almost yeah. 50 points and Kyle Larson was a negative player last week. So um, I'm pretty sure he probably listened to us. But uh, at draft drive, thank you for the question, sir. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank which you. reminds us, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to submit them on either Facebook, Twitter. Uh, our YouTube page or on fantasydonks.com yeah. and we will answer you immediately and that includes questions about uh, roster decisions all the way up until they roll the green flag and yeah. lineups locked. So uh, feel free to ask us any questions that you guys have and with that said if I or Lear don't win any money this week which I hope I do <laughs> and I hope I do we hope it's you guys taking down May uh, using some of the information that we gave you. Yeah. Have a great weekend everybody hopefully and enjoy the races. Let's get it done this weekend, boys. Bye. Have a great weekend, everybody.